Brethren, I brought some of these up last week. Asa, it says he even, when he was diseased in his feet, sought the doctors, not the Lord. Christian, when you are in financial need and you do not seek the Lord first, when you are in medical, physical needs and you do not seek the Lord first, when you need food, when you need clothing, when you need help, when you need a home, when you need a church, when you need understanding, when you need humility, when you need... Brethren, whatever it is, if you are not seeking God first, it is proud, it is relying on the arm of the flesh, and God hates it. And it is absolutely opposed to the way God created this universe. And I'll tell you this, you've got to become convinced of that. You've got to see that in everything when you lay your head down on the pillow at night to thank God that you have a pillow to lay it on. When you wake up in the morning to thank God that He gave you. Brethren, you've got to be convinced of this. That when you do not acknowledge Him, it dishonors Him. When you do not go to Him for every single need, first and foremost, you dishonor Him. Brethren, man is so arrogant, he is so proud, and he is so independent, and you've got to see it in yourself. If you're going to do battle with it, you've got to see it, brethren, for what it is. You've got to see that your independence. God did not make man to run around and boast in his own gifts or boast in anything he has. The apostle says, what do you have that you have not received? You don't have anything. Not anything. Without Him you are worthless. Without Him you are useless. Brethren, live in the light of that. That is a first and foremost fundamental principle. If you're going to do battle against these fleshly passions, and one of those passions, brethren, is self-exaltation. It is a desire in you to set yourself forth, to posture yourself, to position yourself, to look as though you are something and to take credit for it. Brethren, that's innate in us as natural men. And God help us, we are not natural men anymore. We live in the power of another, the power of the Almighty. And brethren, you've got to do battle right there. You've got to do battle with this. Brethren, let this truth ring in your heads. It's not just that when you don't honor Him, that He withholds. This stream of grace, the Scripture says very plainly, He opposes the proud. Brethren, I'll remind you, 1 Peter 5, He's dealing with people in the church. He's dealing with Christians when He said God opposes the proud. Can I tell you something? There are examples in the Scriptures where God doesn't just oppose the lost proud. He opposes the saved proud. You say, can that be? Can there be saved proud? Brethren, that's what Hezekiah did. That's what Asa did. When James and John were wanting to sit on the right and left hand of Christ, that's what they were doing. When they were arguing about who was going to be the greatest, that's what was happening. And that same Peter who was one of those arguing would later come along and say, God opposes the proud. Listen, Peter was pretty haughty. Even if all others deny you, I will not. God let him fall square on his face. He let the devil have his way with Peter in a way that the devil had to ask for special permission Brethren, when God sets Himself against you to oppose you, watch out, because you will be opposed. So be careful. We've got to be convinced of these things. 
Brethren, there's two... Uh, you've got to be convinced you need this. You need to be convinced there is too little regard in the church. There's too little regard in the preaching. There's too little regard in yourself, in myself, for this very thing. The call to humility, I'm afraid, has indeed been too little regarded in the church. And I think it has been because its true nature and its true importance has been too little appreciated. And I'll tell you this, humility does not come effortlessly. It comes with battle. It comes with tears. Brethren, it's like everything else in the spiritual realm. It comes through desire. It comes through earnestness. It comes through being persuaded. I need that. It comes through making it one of the chief things you are battering that battering ram of prayer against the heavens for. Father, give this to me. Give it to me. You tell me that you will conform me to the image of Christ. Give me humility. I see it as a good thing. Clothe yourself with humility, the apostle said. In another place, he said that he urged us, he encouraged us, he exhorted us to walk in a manner worthy of our calling with all humility and gentleness. With all humility, brethren, we've got to be desperate for this. We've got to go after it. We've got to be earnest for it. You pray for it like your soul depends on it because it does. It does, brethren, it does. And we've got to be convinced of it. And I'm not certain, brethren, that we have been entirely convinced of just how much we need it. It needs to be an object of our special attention, our special desire, our special prayer, an object of our faith. What I mean by that, by faith, brethren, you need to lay hold on this. Lord, You promised that you would conform me to the image of your Son. And one of the crowning characteristics is that he's gentle and lowly in spirit. He did not please himself. He did not come to be served, but to serve. He told us to follow him. Lord, please give us this. You told us that if we would cry out to you, you would not withhold any good thing from us. You told us if we then being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, that how much more would you give every good thing to us that ask, Lord, please, we're asking for this thing. We believe it to be good. We believe it, Lord. It needs to be an object of special practice. We must strategize in pursuit of humility. Jesus said, learn of me. Brethren, So many of you young people, you were recently in school or you're now in school. Think about your hardest subject. Did it come easy? You had to learn. You had to study. Brethren, I can tell you this. As I was telling some of the folks down in Laredo on Sunday, I went through four levels of calculus. Brethren, you don't learn four levels of calculus effortlessly. And I'll guarantee you this, you are not going to learn the humility of Christ, the gentleness of Christ, the lowliness of Christ in passing and in some half-hearted effort of Bible reading once a week or twice a week. Brethren, you learn calculus by effort, by strain, by sleepless nights, by study. And you're going to learn Christ harder than I learn calculus. I guarantee it, brethren. It's got to be all-out earnestness to learn this humility.